Hi, I'm Daniel Zangle with PRP Labs here with Don Lipscomb. And we're talking about a scientific paper that used platelet-rich plasma to treat women with sexual dysfunction. And they're trying to see if a PRP injection could increase their sexual function. Uh, notably, this is very widely used application of platelet-rich plasma. And Don and I have, and our team did our best to find the any and all research that's out there for female sexual rejuvenation with PRP. And we found one study, and it might be the worst study that we're ever gonna talk about. So <laughs> Don, can you get us started here? Oh, can I? <laughs> um, so this study assessed a very small number of patients, 11 female patients, and their, their symptoms were varied. So there are multiple different types of disorders, I guess, bunched into here, but basically they were having um, trouble achieving orgasm, being aroused, or they had pain uh, during sex. And they all aged, ranged in age from 24 to 64, which if you only have 11, what was it, like every yeah. four years or something? Yeah, anyway. it's a huge range. Um, so they all received two injections of a PRP right. mix. Yeah, so this is where I, I'd like to interject. <laughs> In the study, they admit to using two different PRP kits, which in and of itself is a, a big issue because we know from independent analysis that one PRP kit could be drastically different from another mm -hmm. just at its face value. Now, to complicate things further, one of the PRP kits they used was only processing 10 milliliters of blood. The other one was processing 60 milliliters of blood, and they're both reducing it down to five milliliters of PRP. So it doesn't take a mathematician to realize that 10 milliliters going to five could at most have a two times platelet mm -hmm. concentration, whereas 60 milliliters going down to five, you could be talking about 10 times platelet concentration. So exactly. th they indiscriminately are using one or the other on patients, not telling us which patient got which PRP treatment. Yeah, I don't even know what the variable is here, actually. Yeah. The main variable. <laughs> like, what are they even comparing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we've got... <laughs> 11 women with different types of sexual dysfunction, mm -hmm. huge age range, using two different PRP kits, no, no control, control group. Control, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so that's the study. And so <laughs> um, for treatment, so um, all the women received two injections. One was in the vaginal wall and then the other in the clitoris. And they then just followed up 12 to 16 weeks and basically asked them, how do you feel? Right, it's a total subjective mm -hmm. analysis. And um, so nine of 11 said that they showed improvement um, after the PRP injections and two experienced no improvement, which they actually reported a, a state of like hypersexual arousal. Yeah, I briefly guess. after the injection, yeah. apparently two of the women had hypersexual arousal yeah. that was uncomfortable for them that then wore off. So to delve into the realm of, of thought, it might just be because there's a bunch of uh, liquid injected into a very uh, into a site that has a lot of densely packed nerves. Right. So that could have accounted for a lot of what yeah. occurred here. Yeah. So the study frames it as positive outcome, right? They're mm -hmm. like, oh, what, eight, nine out of the eleven women yeah. had positive results. That the main reason we're talking about this study is not because we feel like this is great scientific proof of anything. I think the main reason we're talking about this is just to sort of point out that there's practically no research okay. at all on this topic, and yet PRP is still being used in this application in clinics. So uh, I think it's probably time to get some more research on the topic with a control group. Definitely, yeah. a larger sample size, maybe like a specific disorder or right. um, a way of imaging, you know, to see if there's... Right, a more objective analysis. Exactly. Like you could have new tissue growth, but you can't... I'm, I mean, a lot of that is very subtle, so you'd need something like MRI or ultrasound. Yeah. Or if it's it. going to be objective, you need to have a control group. And exactly. Yeah. Uh, or just one kit. Right, <laughs> yeah, at one least kit. one type of PRP kit. Yeah, so, one thing that you're studying. So, so. yeah, we, we, you know, we're we beating up this study a little, but um, it kind of deserves it. So, um, <laughs> Because for all, all of the things PRP really does work for, right. things like this, this is the problem with sort of these... Um, not very in-depth studies is that it can kind of sometimes discredit the legitimacy of other types of treatments Absolutely. for which it really 
has been scientifically shown to work. Right, right. Like how we just reviewed a study showing PRP works for erectile dysfunction, and that exactly. study was much better designed. Very and, robust, yeah. and everything was recorded very well, and yeah, that was a good study. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, thanks Don for covering that. I think we got a little more coming up uh, about PRP, so stay tuned and we will be right back.